importance. The, those of you that have sacrificed to come and be here, I honor you, I bless you. But really, if I, if I didn't have any other part than tonight, this is the part I'm most sure of. And I say that to you humbly, but I say it with confidence. I am convinced that there is a global story for which the great Southlands of the Holy Spirit, all of the Pacific Islands are responsible for, privileged by the Lord to steward and shepherd and release. And I believe tonight is the night, I'm gonna use two words. I believe we are going to ratify and release a great communion revival across the earth. Now, those words are kind of loaded in and of themselves so you can figure out it's a great revival by communion, it's a great revival of communion, I think it's all of those things, but I wanna tell you on the front end where we're going. And then I need to backfill and tell you the story of why I stand before you. It's, it's, it's actually a kind of a fearful thing to make a proclamation like that, but it's more fearful to me not to make it because I'm so convinced in the Lord that it must be made. We are going to ratify and release tonight. And it's right here. It's right here where God has been unfolding the story. And many of you may or may not know it. Some of you have heard me share on this. I, I wrote a book called The Great Communion Revival. I'm gonna read a, a little bit out of it tonight. I'm gonna tell the story, parts of the story that are in this book. If I could be so bold as to ask everyone, go buy a book, because I don't wanna take them back to America. <laughs> Psalm 110, we started out actually talking about on tribes, day one, this vision of praying for 110 key cities. Part of how we settled on 110 key cities, there were 100, 100 110, but we wanted to pray for God to raise up 110 million who would pray every year for 110 key cities out of Psalm 110. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make all your enemies a footstool under your feet. Stretch forth a rod out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Now we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. The enemies aren't the people of those nations. They are the captives under the demonic powers. And that is what this decree is set against. That Jesus has been anointed seated at the right hand of the Father and anointed to stretch forth a rod out of the seat of his government, Zion, with a command, bring down every power that holds people captive. Bring down every demonic principality that blinds the minds of unbelievers. The Spirit of the Lord, Jesus said, quoting Isaiah, is upon me to proclaim liberty to the captives. Salvation to the lost. Jesus said, go and preach the gospel, disciple nations, raise the dead, heal the sick, open blind eyes, cast out demons. We have everything we need to get the job done, which means Psalm 110 is an active partnership between heaven and earth. The rod that he stretches forth out of Zion is you. It's intercession, it's understanding our authority and taking ownership of our neighborhoods and our cities and our nations and bringing every lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God under the captivity of Christ. Psalm 110 is about the rod of God being stretched out and nations being brought. But it says in verse three, 
It says, your, woo, your, your youth will be to you as the dew. Your people will volunteer, and your youth will be to you as the dew. The, uh, the womb of the morning, the, the womb of the dawn, some translations will say. Well, this is a story. I'm just giving little pieces. I'm dropping little pieces in. I'm gonna stitch this together. Someone tend to me is a it's a prophecy, it's a promise, but in this last couple of years, I have come to realize it's geography. Rick Ridings was here, I'm so glad he was able to come. I'm gonna share, uh, dovetailing off of some of what he said. How many of you heard Rick Ridings? Okay, about half the room, but no, maybe only about a third, two thirds maybe didn't. Well, this is really important. Rick Ridings shared about seeing the Lord stretch forth a rod and striking the earth with it. Well, before I get too far into this, I, I need to just do a faith check with you. Do you think God orchestrates nations? Do you think Australia has a sovereign purpose in God? Do you think the Solomon Islands have a sovereign purpose in God? Do you think French Polynesia and Hunga Tonga has a sovereign purpose in God? The Pacific Rim, up into Asia, China, Japan, we could go across India, the continents. Is any one of them outside of the sovereign plan of God? Do any one of them not have a redemptive gift or a purpose in God's plan? Well, we're focused right here for now. We agree there's a sovereign purpose. If there's a sovereign purpose for nations, do you think there's a sovereign purpose for geography? Gotta take it one step further. Because we aren't just floating. We're actually in land regions, identifiable land regions. If I say, go to the map and point to New Zealand, there you are right there. You can go to the map and point because there's a landmass there in the middle of the water, which means God's sovereign purpose for the nation of New Zealand can also be identified by geography. History, time zones. Do you think it's an accident that God said, let there be light and the earth is rotating in such a way that the dawn comes To every nation, the sun rises in the east, sets to the west, and over the course of history, mankind has drawn lines to organize time, and there's a line called the International Date Line, which separates the old day from the new day. And do you know that all the nations of Oceania and the the Pacific Islands are the nations of the new day? You're the ones to whom the new day first comes. You are the heralds of the new day. You are the ones who announce the old day is over and the new day has come. In this great land of Australia, do you think it's an accident that Australia, I know there's a, Uh, uh, Auckland, New Zealand is a part of this, but primarily Australia is the gateway to the nations of the earth for the islands. If you wanna go someplace in the earth, you fly through Australia to get there. See, these are all, this is prophecy writ in history. Prophecy writ in geography. God is telling the story that's not just uh, words and dreams, it's actually your soil. It's actually your, the, the legacy of salvation coming here and from here to the islands. And now the islands are gathered back here and we're launching something, we're ratifying and releasing something because there comes times when time itself is full. 
And when time is full, it doesn't keep getting more full. Time itself separates. And when the fullness of time comes, God moves in such a way that all we can say is, it's a new day. In uh, 2004, I need to unfold this story a little bit. In 2004, a, a group of us, I work with a man named Lou Engel. We have a, a, a team of intercessors and prophets and dreamers. Pay attention to your dreams. How many of you want to dream? If you want to dream more, stand up right now. I love doing this. When I pray for people to dream, they dream. There's a dreaming anointing that our team carries. I want you to stretch out your hands and I'm gonna pray for you right now. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, release a dreaming spirit of God across this entire room. I'm asking for the anointing of dreams, prophetic understanding, divine intelligence. God, I believe that you want, it's the last day's love language of heaven. Joel 2, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will see visions. Your young men will dream dreams. Acts 2, this is that. We're living in those days. God, release dreams. We need divine intelligence. We need answers beyond the, the remedies of man across the nations gathered here and all over Australia and everyone watching I'm declaring a new day of anointed dreams in Jesus' name. Amen. You can sit. So in 2004, we had a dream. This is one of those beautiful, simple dreams. In America, a few years back, I don't know if it hit Australia, but we had these books that were like explaining technical things. And they were called, you know... Uh, the Mac operating system for dummies, the PC for dummies. This is dream interpretation for dummies, okay? Real simple. Out of the sands of time, 2004, out of the sands of time, the dreamer saw a treasure chest being raised up. And the treasure chest opened and words floated out. The coming great blood communion revival. And we knew we were being given a gift of faith for this dream. Now, dream interpretation for dummies. It's in the sands of time, which means there's a process of time, but it's gotten buried. You know, there's some things that we lose over time. The winds blow, the rivers flow, erosion of the soul, of tradition, and we lose some markers and, and, and what was known and seen and used gets buried. But this was important enough that God was not satisfied to leave it buried. Out of the sands of time, he says, this is actually a treasure that I want to recover. And it was the Great Communion Blood Revival. Now, we felt like we had the headline and a gift of faith to pray for this, but we didn't know what it was. Like I said, is that a... A, a, a revival of communion? Is that a revival by communion? We had a lot of different assignments. We would go and pray for those assignments, get a dream, get revelation, pray, see God move, do things. But every now and then we would return back to that dream and we would say, God, release the great communion revival. And then we would say, God, what is the great communion revival? Well, for 16 years, with the exception of one dream, for 16 years, we didn't have any more dreams. We just kind of faithfully prayed into it as the Lord allowed and prompted us. I don't think we did that good. But all of a sudden, in 2020, the dreams began again. That's a little early on the flags, just so you know. It's a little early. I'm afraid it's gonna get, it'll end up being in the way here. So we're bringing the flags back in. So we actually got a ways to go. So you guys just take it easy. <laughs> Eager bunch here. In 
In 2020, the dreams started. In the last three years, we probably had 20 or 30 dreams, whereas in 16 years, we didn't have anything except the one. And these dreams came to us just bam, bam, bam. Different dreamers in our own team and outside of our team from people who would send us their dreams and didn't know what we were dreaming about. And what was remarkable was they weren't vague. They were very clear. One of the first ones in 2020, an outside dreamer sent us a dream where he was announcing the great communion revival will far eclipse every other revival. That's what the dream said. Another one, uh, I, uh, uh, Lou was on his phone and there was a text thread that came up as a scarlet red ribbon coming out. It's interesting, the blood is called the scarlet thread through scripture. You probably heard messages, the scarlet thread of redemption woven through scripture. But in this, it was a scarlet thread that was coming out of the phone like a text thread. And we knew that that was God saying, the word is gonna start to go out. And the word was, God my God, El Elyon, is about to breach the earth soon. The great communion revival. Now what's interesting about that is we start to recognize some connections. El Elyon is mentioned for the first time in Genesis in association with the priest Melchizedek. We know that Jesus is anointed after the order of Melchizedek. And El Elyon is mentioned for the first time as a priest of El Elyon. And what happens when Abraham, for you Bible scholars, after Abraham goes to rescue Lot in the battle of the nine kings, he meets Melchizedek, priest of El Elyon, for the first time. Jesus, who is anointed after the order of Melchizedek, and what does Melchizedek do? He serves him bread and wine. In 2021, we're having these dreams, one after another. In 2021, we start to get a sense that we are supposed to go to Israel. And in Israel, we're supposed to gather in Jerusalem with other leaders. And we, we know the Lord is telling us in these dreams, I won't go into them all, but in the dreams, the Lord is telling us, you need to be ready because there's gonna be a sudden, a sudden, uh, 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 urgency to get to Israel, a sudden trip to make. One of the dreams in 2021 even said, it all adds up to 2022. That was literally in the dream. It all adds up to 2022. So in 2021, we know we've gotta be ready to get to Israel. In 2021, it adds up to something happening in 2022. But little thing called COVID had started in 2020. Some of you may have heard of it. I don't know that Australia was very touched by it. <laughs> Isn't it interesting, the first dream in 2004, we didn't have any more dreams until 2020, and all of a sudden when a plague is in the land, we're back in a Passover story. So all the dreams start in 2020 when Jesus came and took that meal that we're going to take tonight with his disciples, he was connecting the history from Moses to his person. There had been a Passover meal, a lamb was slain, blood marked the doorposts, nine plagues humiliated the gods of Egypt but when the lamb was slain, the power of Egypt was broken. And so the blood, that story, to this day, Jewish children on Passover, it's part of the script, the way they rehearse their own history. They know there's a point in the meal where they ask, Papa, what makes this night different from every other night? Passover was such a dramatic event the emancipation out of Pharaoh's power, the judging of the gods, 
The deliverance of the people, it's a picture of salvation for us, delivered from Pharaoh's power and from the power of sin. What makes tonight so different? God actually told the Jewish people, your history starts over on that night. You gotta build a new calendar. From this day forth, Passover marks your new year. It was a kind of fullness of time, a kind of international dateline in Jewish history. The old day was past and a new year, a new calendar began for them at Passover. What makes that night different than every other night is that the gods were judged and found wanting compared to the power of Yahweh. It's that a lamb was slain and placed on homes so that families could be ransomed. It was the purpose of God to deliver a nation out of darkness into his promise. And Jesus, thousands of years later, comes together with his disciples and he says, I have earnestly desired to have this meal with you. It's the meal Moses had with Israel but I'm not doing Moses' meal. I'm making a new covenant. This is shocking. It's the start of your new calendar. It's the start of your new day. The cross has the final word. And so at Passover, Jesus has the audacity to tell a group of Jewish men who have grown up taking the meal of Moses out of that covenant all their lives, and he says, tonight, my friends, I am creating a new covenant with you, and I'm gonna pay for it with my own blood. Well, so in 2021, we're thinking, how do we get to Israel? But Israel's locked down. In a time of plague, we get all these dreams of a great communion revival, a Passover storyline, and the earth is under a plague and the Jews, for the first time since Moses, are locked in their homes again. All of us were locked in our homes. But you have to pay attention to these signals. See, you can be so sophisticated that you miss it when God slides a prophetic story under your nose, and you're like, yeah, but what about this, or what about this? And we're so jaded and trained to disbelieve everything, we miss these moments. But I'm telling you, God is unfolding a story here. So in 2021, it all adds up to 2022. And so now it's 2022, and Israel is still closed. But that year, last year, Passover and uh, uh, Good Friday coincided on the same day that year. It doesn't happen every year. In fact, most years it doesn't. And so they happened on the same day that year. And we were looking ahead in February and thinking, we need to gather leaders to Jerusalem and be prepared to, to take communion together and just believe that God is going to start something. Couldn't do it. The nation was locked down. We were at a little house of prayer on a 21-day fast, taking communion morning and evening. Morning and evening, a group of us taking communion, we're getting into the word, we're asking the Lord to show us that scarlet thread, we're getting all kinds of revelation, obvious things in scripture that we all know we're seeing in a new way, and hidden things that we've never seen, we're seeing. The story of redemption and the power of the blood is all over, it's glorious. And so we're there for 21 days fasting and praying. We're getting dream after dream. And it's interesting, this little house of prayer was called the door. It's just someone had converted their garage and made it a 24 seven house of prayer. They gave us their house to stay at. And so we did this fast and we're praying at the door. And on the 21st day, the fast ends and we find out 
that on February 22nd of 2022, so 22222, two, 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 which for those that were just going, oh, you know Isaiah 2222 says that the son of David has a key to open a door. And if he opens that door, no man can close that door. And on February 22nd of 2022, 22222, Israel suddenly announced on that day that March 1, their nation was wide open. There were no restrictions. So we bought our ticket. We went. We met with Rick Riding and other leaders at Christ Church, the first Protestant church in the old city built on the ruins of Herod's palace. We met, there were about 100, 150 of us there, leaders from a few nations and uh, uh, messianic leaders in the, in the land. And we met and we just kind of broadcasted over YouTube and Zoom and we said, oh God, here we are. It all adds up to 2022 and we took communion. Now don't despise the day of small beginnings. That year, we had one more dream. And in the dream, a booming voice said, the great I am is preparing to answer the disciples' prayer worldwide, the great communion revival prayer. Now, if you know the Lord's prayer, the disciples' prayer, is, uh, the Lord's prayer is really the disciples' prayer. It's not how he prays, it's how he taught us to pray. And in that prayer, he says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and give us our daily bread. Part of what I wanna leave you with, I believe the Lord's prayer is going to become anointed as a mobile communion table for us. It's a template that contains the communion principle in it. It's the bread of heaven and the forgiveness of our debtors. We can pray that prayer and commune with God out of that as if we're taking bread and wine even though we aren't able to. We started to see this in other places. Psalm 23, uh, 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 one of our dreamers had a dream and he was shown, Psalm 23, the Lord preparing a table in the midst of his enemies. And then the Lord said to him in the dream, would you like to see the table I prepare in the midst of your enemies? He said yes, and he was taken in to see the communion table. We often, in charismatic circles especially, will pray things like, I plead the blood. I think that's actually a good prayer. You can't necessarily find it in scripture, but you can find the principle. The problem is, over time, that treasure chest has gotten buried and we need fresh revelation to see this differently because most of us plead the blood as if we've lost the case. So we pray and we pray and then when we don't know what else to pray, we kind of treat that phrase like it's a magic formula. Oh God, I plead your blood. Now I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be silly there. I really mean it. We've lost some things and so then the pleading becomes pleading. God, I really mean it. Please listen to me. Plead becomes like please. And it's, it's a begging position because that's one of the definitions of plead is to you know, humbly go before and beg and plead. But that's not what we need to be praying. To plead the blood is the, the, the actual definition that we need to think is pleading is to present a legal argument in court. To plead a case is to state a line of irre irrevocable facts. And so to plead the blood is to go to God with great confidence. Oh God, remember your covenant with us. Oh God, you have the final word in the cross. We aren't begging you 
By pleading, we are declaring in agreement with what you have already accomplished. We are announcing with confidence and faith the enemy has been thrown down. The blood speaks a better word. And we announce that with legal authority and confidence in the work of Christ. We know there's life is in the blood. If someone is, has cancer, they, they go and they get stuff put in their blood to attack the cancer. If, if someone's you know, in an accident, the first thing they need is a blood infusion. We get transfusions and infusions. We know that blood is life and blood matters and yet we have come to treat the blood of Christ so casually. He said when he sat with his friends, his disciples, he said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember the Lord's death till he comes. I wanna read just, just a few lines here. Because my great concern, especially for those of us that are from the Protestant tradition, evangelicals, Charismatics, Pentecostals. I believe that we have, I believe the Protestants protested too much. I'm just gonna say it that way. In a corrective that I believe was of the Lord, Martin Luther, Wittenberg, 1517, nailing 95 uh, uh, decrees on the Wittenberg door, a reformation began and part of that reformation was against all of the, the indulgences and acts of penance and works-based salvation. And yet, we took this idea of correcting some things, and one of the things we didn't like was how hyper-literal the Roman Catholics were in saying the body and the blood is the literal body and the blood, and we were... We were so bothered that they made it so literal that we swung not to here in correction, but way over to here. Oh, no, 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 it's just so symbolic. It's so symbolic. It's nothing but symbol. You will have heard a message say. And so we did, when Jesus said, as often as you do this, remember me, we made it so symbolic that it's largely forgettable. Please hear me, hear my heart. I want to honor the body and blood of Jesus tonight. I want us as a began the kingdom age of mercy and triumph over the law of sin and death, accusation and condemnation. Paul said, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So Jesus said to remember, but Paul said we proclaim. So what does it mean to proclaim the Lord's death? First, notice the eschatological tenor of the act. The church is to do this thing until the Lord returns. According to Paul, therefore communion is not just eating bread and drinking juice. Paul's language suggests that the act itself is some sort of wild proclamation of victory that is meant to nourish and sustain us. When we eat and drink, we prophesy a continuity between his first and second coming, between the eternal triumph of his cross and the total triumph of his glorious return. Jesus said, remember, Paul said, proclaim, and I wanna give you a new thought to put those two words together 
And when we remember and proclaim rightly, filled with fresh revelation, digging up that treasure chest, experiencing communion with a bit of redeemed imagination to see Christ in triumph on the cross, in uh, uh, recovering the keys uh, to, uh, to death in the uh, Hades, rising out of the grave in triumph, ascending to the right hand of the Father, and then pouring out His Spirit upon us. I want us to begin to see that in communion, we aren't just remembering and we aren't just proclaiming, but we are reenacting that triumph. We are reenacting. For it to be the Passover story is to be a staggering, epic Hollywood couldn't capture with all of its special effects. The plagues, the judgment on the gods. I think some of what we have is a nice meditative approach to communion. We understand there's something sweet in it. I don't wanna lose that. It's the very real presence of Christ among us. When we take communion here in a little bit, I believe the Holy Spirit bears witness to the blood in an astonishing way and Jesus is going to be moving among us. That's beautiful. Communion is about our connection to each other. How can I be filled with anger or hatred or bitterness against you in light of the great mercy with which I have been shown? To commune with the bread and the wine, is to constantly be brought to his provision for my weakness and failure, and therefore I can love you in yours. The body of Christ shares a meal, and we commune together. It's horizontal, it's vertical. With one sacrifice, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. If you are in this room tonight and you have come into agreement with his salvation, if you have accepted Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior, then you are made perfect. With one sacrifice. That's how big the event was. He's not continually dying on the cross for each of your new sins. He has actually settled something by which you have been made righteous with his righteousness. You are redefined. Your calendar is new. Your international dateline has been set to the new day, not the old way. You are not becoming the best version of you. You are made like unto the very man, Christ Jesus. You are being conformed to his image. You have been given the mind of Christ. You are being renewed day by day, though your outer man be decaying. Your inner man is thriving and alive in God. You are moving from glory to glory and faith to faith. There is a world of transformation happening inside you every day by the power of the Holy Spirit. You wake up in mercies that are new because he did something with such finality that there's nothing you can add to it. There's nothing you can take away from it. He cannot love you more and he will not love you less. I'm gonna wrap this section up. That's what every preacher says. <laughs> but we, you, you all know the social contract is, I get three of those. So that was the first one. <laughs> Revelation 12. There's the horizontal, there's the vertical, but what I want to really put in our spirits tonight is something that is often lost. It needs to be recovered from the sands of time. It's not just communion with one another. That's so powerful. The nations of the earth are tearing themselves apart 
We're divided by every kind of political line, national boundary, socioeconomic status, gender. We're divided by everything, but only in Christ is there one new man. Only in Christ. So this is so powerful. This is so powerful to know that I'm not just forgiven, I'm actually new. I am a new creation in Christ. The old man has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You aren't just a little new, you're totally new. That's so powerful. But what I wanna really concentrate on is the cosmic dimension. Revelation 12 describes the, 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 this, this fulcrum point, this turning point at the end of the age. We see war in the heavens and Michael and his angels waging war. And there's this great battle. And it says, Satan, the accuser of the brethren. Everyone say accuser of the brethren. Okay, we're gonna be done tonight by the end of this with the accuser of the brethren. It says the accuser of the brethren, and isn't it interesting, that's the focus of this passage. He accuses the brethren day and night, and that's what's coming down. He's cast down out of heaven. He loses his place. And so it's this galactic battle. Michael and the archangels, Satan the accuser of the brethren. He's dislodged from whatever status or place he has in, in the lower realm. He doesn't even have access there anymore. And after telling the seven churches, every one of the churches, Jesus shows up to him and he says this, to him who overcomes, I'll grant the tree of life, access to the tree of life. To him who overcomes, I'll grant to sit with me on my father's throne. To him who overcomes, I'll, I'll give a new name. To him who overcomes, to him who overcomes, to him who overcomes. Seven times we see that God's desire at the end of the age is to raise up overcomers. And in Revelation 12, he tells us, how we overcome. And they, say with me, overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives even unto death. See, in this great battle at the end of the age, the Holy Spirit is shining a spotlight of revelation on those who will be poets and scholars and practitioners of the blood of Christ. That we will begin to appreciate and resonate and be fascinated by and glorify. The whole story of Revelation is there's a lamb in the middle of the entire universe, at the governmental center of the universe, there's a throne, and on that throne there's a lamb, and it's why the communion table is in the center of this room, because we are proclaiming across Australia and the islands of the Pacific that Jesus is Lord. So when the accuser comes down, it's because you and I know how to plead the blood. You and I know how to overcome the accuser in our own life. So many of you struggle day after day with the accusing voice of the enemy. You're beat down by it. You wake up defeated because of a failure or a, a habit or an addiction or a sin. You feel defeated uh, if you've gotten divorced or gone through bankruptcy or whatever it is and the accuser is always there, bam, 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 right at your thoughts, reminding you, reminding you, this is what disqualifies you. This is why you can't move forward. This is why you'll never, never fulfill your destiny. This is why you've lost the anointing. This is why they left you. This is why they don't love you. This is why you shouldn't love yourself. And then somewhere in that crowd of people who are drowning in that condemnation, one person gets a revelation of the blood. And they go, wait a second, wait a second. It's not about what I do. It's about what he did. 
It's not about what I achieve. It's about what he accomplished. It's not about who I am. It's about who he is. And so we bring that case with strength. And we have an advocate. We have a great high priest in heaven. He says, you got it. You see, you don't have anything to prove. You're blood marked. There's a boundary line around you. There's a boundary line. We want to draw boundary lines with the blood of Jesus around our mind, around our families, and around our nations. One of those things I saw in scripture, it just blew me away when David went to fight Goliath. It actually is very specific on the terrain. Here we are back to sovereign geography. It says he went to the valley of Soko in the region of Ephes Damum. That's where David picked to run toward Goliath with five stones. Ephes Damum means boundary of blood. This is the covenant son he announces to the Philistine, you uncircumcised Philistine. He was making a statement. He was saying, you're outside the covenant, I'm inside the covenant, and there is a boundary of blood between us. I guarantee you, you're coming down today. We wanna draw boundaries of blood. We wanna renew our minds in the hope of the gospel. We wanna have grace wash over us and restore the revelation of righteousness to all our hearts. Okay, I got, uh, uh. <laughs> here's my second one. I'm about to wrap up. So one of those other dreams, in that dream, the dreamer saw a map of the earth and he saw that there were two kinds of diplomas that were being handed out. Is that what you call it when you graduate from something, a diploma? Yeah, a diploma. These two kinds of diplomas that were being handed out, one kind was the BB diploma and the other kind was the BA diploma. And he saw on a map that every time the BB diplomas were handed out, they multiplied. And they actually had more authority. The people with the BB diplomas had more authority than those with the BA diplomas. But on the map, the whole earth was concentrating in areas, universities and witch covens and, and, and various places were being filled with the darkness that came with the BA diploma. But in families and churches and across the nations, light was breaking out. And the BB, those with the BB diplomas had more authority in the midst of the darkness, more light to overcome. And he saw, finally, on the diplomas, the BB diplomas were the better blood diplomas. And the BA diplomas were the brethren accuser diplomas. The earth is graduating right now. All you have to do is go on social media and read the comments and you see accusation and cynicism and scoffing and mocking everywhere. We attack everything and everyone and we do it in the church. The church is graduating too many BA graduates. Brother Tim shared uh, on, the, on the day of the churches and he shared that powerful video. Uh, but, but, but the guy was saying, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the most sickly family in the city was the church, backbiting, stabbing, speaking poorly. Well, I don't like your doctrine on that. We can't fellowship. You don't trust me. I don't trust you right back. And we gossip and we slander. Listen, the Lord is doing something. He is releasing a spirit of mercy and reconciliation, of love and affection for his body where the brethren, the accuser of the brethren is gonna be cast down in our midst. We wanna graduate here tonight a room of 3,000 uh, BB graduates. 
the better blood, the blood that speaks a better word. I've come out with a whole line about the Better Blood Company. You can go to deanbriggs.com. I've got shirts. I want us to wear it. I'm a member of the Better Blood Company. I want to start to prophesy it everywhere I go. People say, what's that? It means I've got mercy for you. I've got a better word for you. I've got a prophecy about your future. I've got a word about your destiny. Okay, so then Rick Ridings, he shared that word, and now we gotta go all the way back. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time, but I didn't know this was happening. None of us, when we gathered in Jerusalem in 2022, remember the word of the Lord in the dream was, it all adds up to 2022, something starting in Jerusalem, and we took communion that year. The Lord opened the door on 22222, and I started writing this book, and in the process of writing this book, I came across Rick Riding's word. Starting in 2014, he had seen the Psalm 110 rod of God stretched out, and the Lord hit the, the waters at the international dateline. He struck the waters in this open vision, he struck the waters at the international dateline. And a tidal wave began that was so powerful and so epic of the glory of the Lord that it was crashing against demonic strongholds that had been raised up over the centuries as the enemy dimly perceived this glory wave that was coming. A wave of revival, a wave of healing and power and authority coming. It was when the Psalm 110 staff struck the water and it was crashing against the levees and, and, uh, and, and ocean bridge, the walls raised up of Confucianism, Shintoism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam. Wave after wave in all of those places in the 110 cities where 90, where 100% of the world's uh, unreached, unengaged people groups. See, as these flags come in, I want you to realize you can come, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, don't, don't come yet. I think it'll, it'll block. <laughs> but you're ready, that's good. These are the nations that so many are locked up under powers that are blinding the eyes of the unbelievers. And he saw in his vision that God was raising up a giant wave out of the South Pacific that was gonna break down all of those barriers. And I didn't know this, we didn't know it when we went to Jerusalem. But I had heard when I was here that in 1998, a prophet was at Honga Tonga at a youth rally where there were about two or 3,000 young people and under the anointing of the Lord, he prophesied that Tonga was the womb of the dawn nation. That's Psalm 110. He prophesied that they were the womb of the dawn nation. And as I have talked to other islanders, I have understood that for the last 30 years, the elders of Tonga nation. And while we were in that fast, asking the Lord, taking communion daily, getting dreams, one of the ways we tried to imagine the cosmic impact of the cross in unseen heavenly dimensions, we started to watch videos of nuclear bombs going off. And we would pray and we would take the bread and the wine and we would just picture in our mind the nearest most colossal supernatural power manifested in, in the natural that we could, this giant bomb, boom. And we just started to believe and, and see how in communion, in that reenactment, in the reenactment of the power of the cross, we're setting off bombs in the spirit. Boom! We're reminding principalities and powers, you lost your power 2,000 years ago. You've been dethroned. The nations aren't yours. They're his. 
He said, ask of me and I'll give you the nations. And then with Rick Writings, he showed, I'm gonna strike the water in the South Pacific at the international date line. For 30 years, Tonga had been praying, make us the womb of the dawn nation. And finally, in January of 2021, Rick Writings, sorry, in October of 2021, he was frustrated because he hadn't seen the word yet. God, when are you going to do this? He had showed it to him with more and more clarity, but there had not been an event that he could say, this is that. He said, God, you've got to show me a sign. And then in January of 2022, it all adds up to 2022. We didn't know this part of the story. We went to Jerusalem in April or May. But in 2022, the Lord had already answered. And so I'm gonna show you an atomic bomb so you can get the feel of it. And then I wanna show you this story. Let's roll that. On January 15th, a submarine volcano called Hunga Tonga in the Kingdom of Tonga exploded. It had been erupting for a few weeks, but after a period of relative calm, the eruption became more and more violent over a couple of days and eventually produced a colossal explosion. The images of the eruption from space are just shocking. This thing was enormous. It basically deleted the central parts of the volcano that stuck above the water, and yet this explosion was only half the story, and it caused a cascade of events around the world. And possibly was the very first time we've ever observed a particular atmospheric phenomenon. January 15th, Tonga eruption sent tsunami waves and an air pressure shock wave around the world. The shock wave pushed small tsunamis in front of it, so it generated tsunami in, in all bodies of water. And even more surprising was that when this uh, shock wave, which moved about 300 meters per second, was over deep water, like a trench, it was pushing water at about the same speed as it was moving. So uh, there was resonance there. It pumped energy into the wave and created a bigger wave. So this event, the January 15th eruption, is very unique. So the last similar event would have been 1883 at Krakatoa in Indonesia. Um, that killed tens of thousands of people. The sound of the eruption was heard in many parts of the world, as far away as the US. You can clearly see where the plume of ash is spread by the number of lightning strikes in satellite imagery. By one count, in three hours, the eruption produced 400,000 lightning strikes. The pressure wave from the explosion can reinforce those tsunami waves. One of the really interesting things is actually this atmospheric forcing. One, it's amazing in terms of the up all around the world, you know, you actually see this, this wave traveling around the world multiple times. Is the Lord sovereign of history? Does he orchestrate the boundaries of nations? Acts 17 says he does. 
habitation of people, the boundaries of nations? Is it an accident that it was prophetically announced at Honga, which is the first nation across the international date line? They are literally the womb of the dawn nation. For 30 years, they laid a hold of that word. Rick Riding saw the Lord striking the water at the international date line. How many of you have kept up in Australia, South America, North America, Europe? The headlines have been how the last year has been the hottest on record. And there is the belief by many, or at least the media continues to tell us this is the result of global warming. But it's noticeable in the last year, and NASA and the European Space Agency have identified why. And it's not global warming and carbon dioxide. That event put 30% more water vapor in the upper atmosphere than the upper atmosphere normally has. And the water vapor is trapping the light and the heat. In other words, the earth is literally heating up with the lamb wave. The earth is heating up with the lamb wave. And the amazing thing is the name of the man who discovered this. It's kind of hard in the technical jargon, but it was so powerful. The only other time it's been recorded in history was that czar bomb. That released a powerful enough detonation that it created this event that we identify as a lamb wave. It's when the atmosphere, it literally rings like a bell because there's so much force against the atmosphere. But the actual dynamic is that the wave that's released on the earth and the displacement of water, that has a pattern to it. And the explosive force in the atmosphere created an equal pattern in the air. So a lamb wave is when heaven and earth agree together. And it sent the shock wave, the, the, the agreement accelerates the force on earth. It circled the earth three and a half times. It's the most powerful event. It was a 25 story wall of water under the ocean and a lamb wave in the heavens. And the name Horace Lamb, the man who discovered it, I just love the poetry of God. Horus means time of day. The name Horus means timekeeper or time of day. You want to know what time it is? It's time for the lamb. You want to know the new day? It's when the people volunteer freely in the day of his power. It's at the womb of the dawn, and he sends a sign. There was a prophet many years ago called Bob Jones, and he said, the Bible is filled with language about signs and wonders. He said, do you want to know what a sign and a wonder is? A sign is when God does something beyond the power of man to replicate, and he typically does it in a heavenly dimension, a comet, a geological or, uh, event. It can't be manipulated by man. So he gives a sign in the heavens so that you wonder on the earth. A lamb wave. And Rick Riding saw it striking the earth at the place of the new day. We're on a new calendar, folks. I want to say to the pastors in the room, Abandon the aspiration to go back to normal. Please. Our great aspiration is not to get a good Sunday service again. Our great aspiration is to see Jesus multiplied among the nations. In Luke 24, when Jesus was, after his resurrection, the disciples didn't recognize him. 
but he was walking with two on the road to Emmaus. And they didn't know who he was. They didn't recognize him. But it says when he took and he broke the bread, he said they knew it was Jesus. And later their testimony was, did our hearts not burn within us? God, I'm asking for 3,000 burning hearts in this room. God, and what's about to happen as we take communion, would you recover a treasure out of the sands of time in each of our lives? Would you recalibrate our Protestant and evangelical expectation of our experience of you in communion? God, would you show us how to make this a prophetic act, a reenactment of your triumph? Would you reveal and confirm Christ to us in love for one another, in love for you, and in celebration of the ultimate victory which you achieved on the cross. Would you cause our hearts to burn? I wanna invite the leaders that have been, this, this group right here, the IPC leaders, leaders in the nation, Jamie, others, islanders, if you're a leader among the islands, if you're a pastor at a church, a leader of a house of prayer or a prayer network, please come up. I want us to do this together. Let's do this together. And we're gonna just flow for a while here. This is how we're gonna close out the evening. Taking communion, worshiping the Lord. Brothers and sisters from different movements, different parts of the earth, please, if there are islanders, please come. This is sober, but it's glorious. Oh, please, even fill in. I wanna fill in around this table. Some of you, we just wanna get in here like family. If you don't have your communion cup, if you don't have the elements, please raise your hand and someone will get them to you. We have some up here. I meant to tell you to bring your communion elements with you. We've got enough that, we've got enough bread for sure. <laughs> but we're gonna, we're gonna take from here. It may just take a while. If you don't have out in, the, out in the auditorium, if you don't have, please raise your hand. We want everyone in this. We're gonna focus on the bread and then we're gonna worship. We're gonna focus on the blood and then we're gonna worship. We're gonna pray over the nations. We're gonna pray a bloodline around Australia, around the islands. And before we're done, listen, if you haven't made the connection yet, I believe in 2022 in Jerusalem, a great communion revival started in simple faith. But the Lord gave the sign that is meant to make us wonder at the beginning of that year at Tonga. And so we aren't asking him to release this. As the body of Christ, we are adding our yes and amen to ratify what he has already done. And we want to ratify and say, yes, God, let that wave come. Let that wave come. Let's pray that right now. Let that wave come. Now just pray it in the spirit. Let that wave come. Let that wave come, oh God. Let it come and wash across our lands. Wash across the islands. Wash across Australia. We ratify what you have already done. Even as heaven and earth agree together on earth as in heaven, we say you've begun it. It all adds up to 2022. You struck the earth. It's a new day. It's a new day. Declare the new day. It's a new day.
Hallelujah. We declare a new day. We declare a new day. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We declare this is a new day, a new season, a new year. Yes. Uh, to the glory of God. We rejoice. Yes. Pray it over the generation. The Lord is doing a new thing. The Lord is doing a new thing. It's a new wave in this generation. You are the wave. You are the new wave. You are the wave of glory. The wave of glory is in you. Go into all the nations and proclaim the gospel. Now is the time of salvation. Tom, Tom Cole, where are you? I mean, Tom Victor, where are you? Tom, pray a bloodline around the generations. Father, we, we say now, today, with the first family, with you, the first family, Father, we pray for the blood of Christ to cover every family, every family every nation, every tribe, every generation. Father, make us one with you. By the blood of Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, thank you for standing. I, I, I want us to all be in this moment together. We're representing you standing across the room. Pastor Margaret, would you pray a bloodline around the tribes? Father, we thank you. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for a bloodline around the tribes, Father, around the nations, Father, of the world. And we pull down the blindness over the minds, over the eyes, over the ears, and we commission them into the kingdom in Jesus' name. There be such a release of your glory in this time throughout the nations, such your blood, such a revelation, wisdom and understanding of what you fulfilled at the cross for us to walk in the fulfillment of it now, to fulfill your will in the earth, Father. Oh, we just thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. presence to acknowledge the blood of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that precious blood, that prop, that blood that is so prized, that is so costly, Father, I spread it over the islands of the South Pacific in, in Jesus' name. Let it bring cleansing, let it bring healing, let it bring restoration, let it shed the wave of God that will come, that will overshadow all Lord, we bless you and we thank you from the ends of the earth, from the islands of the sea. We can hear singing and worshiping because of the redemption of the blood of Jesus Christ over the islands, over the Solomon Islands, over Vanuatu, over Papua New Guinea, over Fiji, over Vanuatu, over the Cook Islands, dear Father, over Samoa, over Tonga, over Tahiti, over Guam, over those island nations, dear Father. We thank you for the work that has just begun right now and from this day on. Father, the wave will begin to cross upon these islands of the sea back to Australia, throughout Asia, into Europe, and right back to Israel. We give it all the glory. You are worthy, 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 worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Donnie, pray a bloodline over the generations. We speak the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ over the generations over nations the blood of Christ covers you the blood of Christ 
marinates you, heals you, restores you, strengthens you, empowers you, and revives you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We agree together tonight, Lord Jesus. We declare the blood of Jesus over Asia. That you have redeemed your people, Lord Jesus. We speak new wave into Asia, Lord Jesus. Into Indonesia, Lord Jesus. We speak new wave to China, Lord Jesus. The blood of Jesus has paid the price for Asia and for all of the nations. So across the room, begin to plead the blood over your city and your nation and your family. You are begging. You're declaring a court case that has already been won. Name your children and your grandchildren in this court case. Name the street you live on and your neighbors. Name the city. Name the nation. This is why we're here. This moment. We are sons of the covenant. Sons and daughters of the new covenant. And the Messiah has drawn a bloodline around us. He's put the weapon in our hands. Every Goliath must fall. Every Goliath must fall. Gotta cry out for America. Cry out for your nation. As the worship team begins this song, I want us to appreciate the church for many centuries considered communion. They called it the central act of worship. Part of the recovery of a great communion revival is not to do it that once a month or once a quarter and check it off the list and say we've done it. No, we're entering into the greatest avenue of power. It is the spirit bearing witness to the blood that is the answer to the nations. So we aren't trying to rush and say the evening's over. We want to make a meal with God. So let's worship and then we're going to break the bread. We're going to stay just right here. Let the weak Let the poor say I am rich Let the blind say I can say It's what the Lord has done in me Yeah. 
We're going to pray for healing in this room right now. Isaiah 53. He took upon himself our iniquities. He was bruised. He was afflicted. And by his stripes we're healed. I don't believe you need anyone to lay hands on you. The broken body of Christ. The bread of life that comes down from heaven. Even as it is broken, you are made whole and healed. Let's worship. Take your communion cups. Take the bread. And as we sing this chorus again, we're going to serve the bread here. And you eat the bread. And we release healing across this room in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you died and rose again. I think one of the mistakes we make is treating communion too lightly. But then to fix that, we make it so sober and somber and heavy. This is a party, people. This is a celebration. This is a feast. We are being reconciled to one another. We have been reconciled to God. And we are reenacting a nuclear bomb that goes off every time we take the bread and the wine. Prophesying the enemy's fall and total annihilation in the days to come. Yes, please. If you've already taken the bread, that's fine. We're gonna do it a little different up here. We're gonna dip. So start passing the cup. What, just for, yeah, go ahead and do that. It's gonna be easier. Just gonna pass that around. Um, I meant to mention, if you're watching online, please go get bread and juice now. Please do this with us. I don't remember how many it was said uh, uh, might be watching on TBN and online. One and a half million people. Let's have a one and a half million person communion, Eucharist feast. And then as that ripples out into other time zones, remember, we're ratifying something here. The Psalm 110 rod struck the water. It all adds up to 2022. We're adding our yes and amen to the lamb wave. You know what an alarm is? It's a bell that tells you to wake up. And so for that thing to ring the atmosphere like a bell is telling the earth, wake up. Wake up. Your redemption draws nigh. We're going to take and drink of the blood. And Here's what I want you to do right now, very simply, forgive everyone. 
It's that easy. Forgive everyone. Whoever just came to your mind, that's the person to forgive. Whoever just came to your mind to think, ah, I can't do that, that's the one. Forgive everyone. Release them now. Don't say it was okay. It wasn't okay. It was unjust. Whatever the offense, whatever the cause of the bitterness, it wasn't okay. But in the mercy of Christ, you can release them and you are the one who gets out of prison. We want a jailbreak tonight. We want a giant jailbreak from our emotional prisons, our bodies racked with stress and disease from bottled up unforgiveness. There's healing in the broken body and there's renewal in mercy and forgiveness. Forgive your spouse. Forgive your parents. Forgive the business partner who double-crossed you. And this may be the hardest. If the Lord can forgive you, can you forgive yourself? Can you forgive yourself? Are you bigger than God? If His mercy can touch your life and forgive you, then can you receive from that mercy? You might need to even just place your hand on your heart and say, God, I surrender it to you. I don't have the right to hate myself anymore. I don't have the right. One of the most anointed lyrics of the last 10 years, I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about how he loves me. You don't have time, young people in the room. You may have grown up in so much brokenness, so much pain. You may be stacked with regret. Tonight is your get out of jail free card. It wasn't free to Jesus, but he paid a price that's sufficient for all of your regrets. And here's the deal, as you take I need some of that. Thank you. Oh, it's got it. Okay. But I want to dip myself. Here's the deal. Thank you. Communion is not about you getting 99% forgiven. We're going all the way. You don't have permission to hold on to that 1%. You don't have to somehow do penance and prove that you're worthy of that final 1%. And we're going to cast down the accuser of the brethren. We're going to silence on our lips when we take the blood, when we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. What we are saying is, I will no longer use my lips to curse you. I will no longer use my lips to come against you, to defile you, to gossip about you. These are pure and holy to the Lord, and I will bless you. I will bless every church I pass by. I will bless every pastor I encounter. I will bless every family. I will bless the lost, the least, the hurting. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Let's sing this. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Come now. by the blood of the 
tonight. Let's sing that. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. After that, the cross has the final word. We overcome by that. the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our testimony. And the word of our testimony. We overcome. We overcome. We overcome. fast when we take, took communion every morning and every night. I had a dream, and in the dream, I saw a document set before me, and it was like an inheritance. It was like a will and testament. It was filled with good things and wealth and, and blessing and favor and all the stuff that I, we all want in life. It was a legal document, and it was all mine. And I was looking at this and a hand reached from behind and over my shoulder. And in a proud, boasting voice, it said, look what I can do. And it X'd out and nullified my inheritance. And I'm looking and I'm struck and I'm powerless. It was all mine and it was taken from me. It was X'd out by this power that I could not prevail over. And I'm staring, in this dream, I'm staring disconsolate and defeated. And then I hear another voice. And another hand reaches from behind my shoulder. And it says, but look what I can do. And it did two X's, except I saw the X's were actually crosses and I knew that the enemy had just been double crossed and I knew that the inheritance was fully mine we have been given an inheritance in Christ the enemy has been double crossed he is defeated and I am asking now for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God as we sing this song. The cross has the final word over your life. You have been double crossed. The inheritance of heaven is yours. Oh, that you would know the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints.
breaks the bread and the wine. On the night Jesus was betrayed, isn't it interesting that it says that? You bring your betrayals. How you betrayed the Lord, how you've been betrayed. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. We find healing. In his witness, we find our unity together. He said, this isn't the old covenant. This is the new covenant in my blood. It speaks a better word. We're the better blood graduates tonight. We speak a better word. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your body and your blood. We feast on that tonight. Across 40 nations, a million and a half people, the islands, the great Southland of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, bear witness tonight that Jesus is exalted at the center of our land. Let's take it easy. Father, we are in a place when the storms come and the storms rage, you are around and you protect and we live in your peace and in your covering because you've got our times in your hands and we thank you that we can trust you with all things, even our temporal lives here, how long we'll live and what we're called to do. It's in your hands and we give ourselves to you, Lord. Is there anyone from Tonga here? I'm going to pass the mic. We're just going to take a little bit and pray. Tonga? Um, I came here searching for identity, for a calling from God. And I thank the Father, Lord. I thank your calling, Lord. The blessings upon my generations, that the blessings upon my lands, not just stay there, but may it overflow. May it overflow like a living well into Australia, into New Zealand, into the world. Your blessings aren't just for me, they're for who are around me. Your strength isn't for me, it's to lift others up in Christ. So the cross has already won. The cross has won in Tonga. The cross has won here today, tomorrow, and for the rest of our lives, Lord. Father, we just thank you. Lord, we seal everything now with the new anointing, Father, of your new covenant with us, Lord God. Lord, you have your way within each and every one of us as we are brothers and sisters in your name, Lord God. Father, you spread this from here to the rest of the world, Lord God, and those that are watching far and wide, Lord God, that they feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Drink from that cup, Father. Eat your body, your Holy Spirit. We just give you praise and honour for this time of gathering in Jesus' mighty name. And I say, Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray in pigeon. Papa God, me blood dog, thank you, Lord, this the night. Papa, you God, Lord Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now you God, Lord, me blood, Lord, this the night. Papa God, me blood dog, thank you. Lord, grace blow you. And me karama be me blood. Me blood dog, thank you. Lord, blood blow you. And me washing me blood. Then making me blood clean. Then me blood can come up and say, beginning, blow you. Lord, this the night. 
Papa God, we pray by this blood, by can karma him all the country. He represented no display night. Father, that your revival and by can come up inside all this country. Lord, name blood Jesus. We pray that all get the powers blood darkness by can brook Lord, name blood Jesus. That Papa God revival and by come up long all this nation. Lord, name blood Jesus Christ and be Lord and Savior. Lord, me blood. Amen. Father, I thank you that we are your righteous, that we're seated in heavenly places by grace through faith. Father, we look down at our nations, every nation, every flag that is here, every representation here, that we can see with your eyes that we are your channels. And we look down over the earth, Father, that your glory is already released in the earth. And we just thank you, Father, for your blood, what you've done, blood-washed nations. Father, we just thank you as we walk in faith. Father, we see with your eyes, we hear with your ears, we speak with your mouth. Oh, we just thank you, Father, for your word. You've given us the sword of the Spirit, Father, to take the nations back for you. You're waiting for us, Father. Oh, we just thank you what you fulfilled for us and your blood shed for us to walk in that righteousness now here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. We're gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna get about two or three others, short one or two minute prayers, releasing over the people. Then we're gonna go back into worship and on one of the, uh, not the, uh, the, the second song on Oh Praise the Name, if you don't know, but it, whoever brought a flag in, when we get to Oh Praise the Name, come get your flag and that'll be the exit. What I want us to see as we start to wrap up, we're going to pray a little bit more, we're going to worship a little bit more. And then the African worship team is coming on at 10 o'clock and the party just keeps going. But I want us to see even in just a little way, how we've tried to create a little picture of heaven on earth. The nations came streaming in with the lamb at the center. And we're about to commission them to go forth out of communion with one another, out of communion with God in Christ, and out of the victorious reenactment, the cosmic triumph of Christ. We're going to send the flags of the nations forth from Perth. We are proclaiming it's a new day in the earth. And so I want you to say with me three times. I, wanna, I want us to seal this in the spirit. I believe this is a 3,000 person ecclesia. We have a uh, a vote right now to cast before heaven. Yeah. He has already done it, but we're going to ratify the lamb wave. Yeah, and so just, we're gonna add our agreement with those words, we're gonna say three times, we ratify the lamb wave. Because we want the earth to keep heating up with salvation and miracles and glory. I'm not talking about natural heating up. We all need air conditioning and relief from that, but you understand, we wanna see the glory of the Lord cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. As these flags go out, Revelation 5, they sang a new song saying, worthy are you to take the scroll and to break the seals. For you were slaughtered and you purchased people for God with your blood from every tribe and language and tongue and nation. So three times we ratify the lamb wave. This is you casting a vote in heaven to agree with what he has already begun, already accomplished, and already supplied. One, two, three. We ratify the lamb wave. We ratify the lamb wave. We ratify the lamb wave. Amen. Let's sing the next song.
on. Please keep the house lights up. Yeah. Look at the beautiful body of Christ.